what are ra record labels looking for these days? It seems like all they want, oh, this is from Tori Lipsmond. Uh, it seems like all they want is dancing pop songs, and that's not what I do. Should I give up on the idea of pitching record labels if I write rock songs? That, again, is from Tori Lipsman. Well, Tori, um, the question wasn't entirely clear on if you're trying to be an artist and get signed or if you were pitching, if you want to pitch songs. So if you're in the chat room, uh, please let us know. But um, I want you to go look at the charts. Okay, uh, I, I was looking at a billboard the other day and then I was looking at an iTunes chart. I personally think that for the last year and a half, two years, that we're going through one of the best periods of music that we've gone through in quite some time, even though I am the first to admit that so much of what I hear on the radio uh, is homogenized, dancey pop that's over compressed and all kind of sounds the same, but there are moments where there are other groups that come to the fore that are really unusual and if there is I any mean, sorry i just put powder on right before the show and i feel a sneeze <laughs> uh hold on pardon me oh. Not like a freight train um if there's something that i've personally noticed it's that the blending of musical styles these days is something that I, I think is happening again. It hasn't happened in a while. We've become very compartmentalized as an industry with rock stations, which are almost non-existent nowadays, pop stations, urban stations, country stations, jazz stations. It used to be back in the 70s, a station would just play almost anything that was good. And uh, it was FM, the, the beginning of FM's rise to dominance. Well, nowadays everything's compartmentalized, but I hear a lot of crossover. So if you fit in the pop category, but have a rock edge, if you can bring something unique about what you're doing rock-wise to a pop beat, there you've got an opening. As an artist, if you, again, if you give almost anything a pop underlayment, a track, a, a production quality that's pop-like, um, and then lay other stuff, it could be jazz, it, it could be um, rock, it, it could be Latin. There's so many things that you can lay over a pop bass. And then once you've done that, then think about what would I do with this if I were a DJ? I heard something the other day, and I can't remember to save my life what it was, but, um, oh, I know what it was. <laughs> I was on my way back from flying uh, my remote control planes on Saturday, and I heard, uh, was it Owner of the Lonely Heart by Yes? Remember that? Uh, I think uh, engineered and produced by Eddie Oford. Offered, Oford. Um, and that was probably the earliest days of samplers. Uh, things like Synclaviers were hot back then. And they had these really, really cutting edge for the time um, samples jacked into this song that uh, was kind of a prog rock slash pop song with these really like um, strange time signatures as far as how the, the samples were laid in there. And it totally made you whip your head around and go, holy crap, that's really different and really cool. So that's what I think that you have to do, Tori Lipsman, is think in terms of what you can do with your rock stuff in the context of pop. That way you're playing, making music, either writing songs um, or making music as an artist that is pitchable to labels and labels can pitch it to radio and radio still does count. There are plenty of other ways to hear music nowadays. I know that, but radio does still count. Radio helps build a mass audience. Um, you can do it with YouTube, but it's hard. You've got to really learn the YouTube thing. You can do it with social media, but you've got to really learn the social media thing. You've got to build a giant audience in order to fill large rooms with people, and that's where you really make the money because you're not going to make it from selling downloads. You're not going to make much money from streaming. You are not going to make that much money from ad revenue unless you're just getting tens of millions of views, maybe even hundreds of millions of views, streams, I mean. Um, but concerts, 
that's where the big money is made. so that's what i would do if i were you, tory lipsman.